Thank you again for tuning in and for listening. Uh, today is May the 10th, 2020 at Riverside Baptist Church, and this will be our evening worship service. I want to say once again, Happy Mother's Day to all of those ladies out there. And uh, we will be celebrating Mother's Day later in the year when it is safe to get back together. And it may be done a little bit differently, but we will do that later in the year and probably same with Father's Day. Uh, if we are back in church by Father's Day in June, it's probably going to be on a very limited capacity. And uh, I'll let everyone know that's a member of this church before we do. I do not really anticipate being back by Father's Day, but we may be at a very limited way. So I'll let everyone know, but we will be celebrating Mother's Day and Father's Day in a greater uh, way later in the year. Uh, we have been covering on Sunday night in our evening worship, we have been cut, covering the study in the book of Romans. And we have covered all the way through Romans chapter 15, and we stopped last time with verse 22 of Romans 15. And I said I would pick up today in this segment where I left off. So before I do that, let me give you some more background that I found in as I was studying some more on these uh, last couple of chapters of the book of Romans. In chapter 14 through chapter 15, we see Christian guidelines, and we've talked about that. And in chapter 14, 1 to 12, we saw one of the main things we saw was that judgment is God's right, not man's. And then also in chapter 14, at the end of the chapter, we saw that love requires self-limitation for the sake of others. Now in chapter 15, what we looked at last week, we saw that we should follow Christ's example of forbearance. And we see in this next section, which is what could be called the conclusion of the book, we see Paul's goal, uh, the goal of Paul's ministry rather, in verses 14 to 21 of what we read last Sunday. In bringing his letter to a close, Paul expressed his confidence in the character and the competence of his readers. He admitted a boldness in the way he has written to remind them on some points. But as a minister of Christ to the Gentiles, he was eager that the offering of the Gentiles as a sacrifice to God would be acceptable in verse 16 of this chapter. In seeking to win obedience from the Gentiles, the Apostle Paul had preached the gospel from Jerusalem to Iricum, a province bordering the Adriatic Sea. It was his particular ambition to preach the gospel in the pioneer areas which had never heard it. And I mentioned that in the, on the last tape, the last segment, that Paul wanted to preach where no one had gone before. He wanted to be the first one that people heard about the gospel. And so he wanted to visit Rome, but he also wanted to go beyond Rome and go all the way to Spain. And so we see in verses 22 to 29, Paul's uh, travel plans and how he plans to travel to Rome and then beyond Rome, maybe as far all the way to Spain. So he says, at the beginning of his letter, Paul had mentioned his off delayed plans to visit Rome. And now at the end, he repeated them. Only here, Paul disclosed a further plan not mentioned earlier, namely the evangelization of Spain. Feeling that his work in the East had drawn to a close, he wanted to visit Rome briefly and then press on to Spain. Obviously, he had written this letter to gain the support of the Roman church for his mission to the West. For the present, however, Paul's visit to Rome and points beyond had to be postponed. First, he had to accompany the delegates from the Gentile churches to Jerusalem with the relief offering. As soon as this mission had been completed, Paul would visit Rome en route to Spain. And he closes this chapter 15 with requests for prayer. Concerned about the trip to Jerusalem, Paul asks his readers to pray for three main things. And the first being that he would be delivered from unbelievers in Judea. 
Secondly, that his ministry in behalf of the poor believers in Jerusalem would be acceptable to them. And last, that God would permit him the refreshment of his anticipated visit to Rome. And when you study the book of Acts in chapters 21 to 28, it provides insights regarding Paul's answers to these prayer requests. And we had actually finished studying the book of Acts right before Romans because we were not studying chronologically, but we were studying rather the way they come in the New Testament. And if you know your books of the Bible, you know that the book of Acts comes before the book of Romans. Now let's take a look at Romans chapter 15, verses 22 through the end of the chapter, verse 33. For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. Let me back up to verse 21. For as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and that they have not heard should understand. For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. But now having no more place in these parts, and having a great desire of these many years to come unto you, whensoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey, and to be brought on my way thitherward by you, if first I be somewhat filled with your company. So he's saying in these verses, he's wanting to go to Rome, and he also wants to go all the way to Spain, which is further west, but he wants to stop in Rome and spend some time there with them before he goes on to Spain. But he says in verse 25 that in the immediate presence, he needs to go to Jerusalem. He says, but now I go into Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. For it hath pleased him in Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. It hath pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of the spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in the carnal things. For thereunto I have performed this, and have sealed to them this fruit, I will come by you into Spain. And I am sure that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. Let me back up and just say that the saints in Jerusalem are being persecuted. Many of them, uh, if people, if they were openly Christian or if they admitted to being a Christian, then people would refuse to sell to them. And so they could not buy or sell food. And so uh, many of them were going without food, and then many were just, they didn't have it. And they were refused work because of their allegiance to Christ, and so they were truly poor. And so the Gentile Christians wanted to do something for their brothers, fellow brothers, sisters in Christ in Jerusalem, and so they wanted to send an offering to those who were uh, struggling, and Paul was going to make sure that that offering got into the hands of the people that it was meant for. And so what Paul was saying here is that it was through the Jews and through Christ that the Gentiles received their spiritual gifts, so it was only natural for the Gentiles to give material gifts because they had been the recipients of the spiritual gifts. So then in verse 30, he says, I want you to strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. We might not look at it this way, but the Apostle Paul knew that prayer was more than just saying a few things and then going, you know, jumping up, going your way and doing whatever. Paul talked a lot, and the Bible talks a lot about being a prayer warrior. It talks a lot about striving in prayers. Uh, the Bible says that the prophetess Anna had served the God how through her prayers and fasting. So we, as we pray to God, it's a work. It's, it's, uh, it's not just something to take light or flippantly. Prayer is very important. Prayer can be the most important thing and is the most important thing quite often in the work of any ministry. And so never un underestimate the power of prayer. And not, never underestimate uh, what you're doing if you're truly a prayer warrior. 
You may not be able to physically go and be a missionary or whatever, but you can certainly pray. And so the Apostle Paul says, I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that ye strive, that ye work, that ye struggle together with me in your prayers to God for me. Verse 31 says that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea, and that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints. So he prays, he wants him to pray that he'll be delivered from his enemies and that his service uh, that he had, this gift he was bringing, would be accepted of the saints in Jerusalem. And verse 32, that I may come unto you with the joy by the will of God and may be with you and may with you be refreshed and so he's praying that he'll be able to spend time with them and be refreshed with them. And, and he closes the chapter by saying, Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. And so we see here Paul's desire to go to Rome. He wants them to pray that he will be able to get there safely. He'll be able to deliver this gift that he's bringing from the Gentiles to the Jews in Jerusalem. He talks about uh, being accepted by the saints that are at Jerusalem. And he talks about being refreshed from the saints at Jerusalem as he continues to make his way to Rome and to Spain. And I want to point out to you that as far as we know from secular history, Paul did make it to Spain, I mean to, to Rome, excuse me. Some people believe he never made it to Spain, but we don't know. There are some who believe he made it to Rome, then he went to Spain, then he came back to Rome. We do know, and secular history confirms the fact, that Paul was beheaded. He was martyred for the cause of Christ in Rome. And so uh, whether or not he got to go to Spain and stay there for a length of time and then come back to Rome, we're not 100% certain, but many feel he did. And, uh, but he certainly did get to go to Rome and he had a great ministry in the capital in Rome for a couple of years before he ends up being beheaded in Rome. So God worked it out to where the ministry could carry on from even his imprisonment in Rome. Uh, thank you for listening today. I wanna to close with a word of prayer. And so let's have a word of prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for each and every person out there listening. Lord, I pray that if anyone is out there listening to these teachings, to any of these segments, Lord, and they do not have a personal relationship with you, Father, they would realize that all they need to do is confess and repent of their sins. Realize, Lord, that when you died on that cross, you died in their place so that they could live forever for you. Father God, I'm so glad that this world is not our home, that we're just passing through. Help us, Lord God, to put our priorities where they should be, Lord, on you first and on others second and ourself last. Lord God, help us to realize that material possessions are not important. We can't take them with us when we go. Father God, there have been many, many people over these past months who have died from the coronavirus and other things. Many of them had a lot of material possessions, but not a one of them got to take a single thing with them when they went. And Father God, we know that what we do take with us is the works that we have done for you because your word reminds us in the book of Revelations that when we die, our works follow us. What we have done is what follows us. And we are judged and we are rewarded according to what we've done for you. That's what your word teaches us, Lord. And Father, help us to remember that. Father God, I pray for protection for each and every person in our church, protection for their friends and loved ones. I pray for peace and comfort to all of those who have lost friends and loved ones, be it to the coronavirus or anything associated with it or, or even things not associated with it. Lord, we've had several friends and loved ones and associates and and people that we know, acquaintances, Lord, who have died and who have loved ones who have died recently, and we pray for all of those families, Lord, that you would strengthen them and that you would give them the peace that only you can provide in a time of loss. We pray all these things in your holy name. Amen.